Congo Merc. The Congo. 1964. It's another one of Decision Games. Minutes to learn. Quick to play. Historically accurate. It's part of their mini-game series, and this is specifically their Commando mini-game series. Uses mechanics that are very similar to what we've seen before as we do our kind of kind of kind of half you know halfway hex encounter now it's not a hex encounter game i gotta warn you it's one of these uh point to point games and you'll never you'll never guess where it takes place it takes place in the congo congo Merc are they, is this the sealess scouts so as usual we've got a game here that's not terribly complicated it's by decision games the design is by joe miranda Joseph Miranda, four pages, not terribly complicated, but like all the best games, these four little pages get, you know, I feel like, I feel like I'm missing something. These games usually, we, we did the uh, Merrill's Marauders, which was uh, World War II commandos in Southeast Asia, and I, uh, 18 cards, four page rule book, usually they have like a one... I'll have to, when, when we're done here, I'm going to jump online and uh, see if I can figure out, may, maybe you can download the, the rest of the rules. We'll go with what we got. This is the best we can do, and um, we're not going to punch these out. This is all the, the tokens that you need, all the counters. And then again, it's a card-driven game, so this is your AI. Let's just dive right in, shall we? Before I cut these bad boys out, let's go ahead and take a look at these counters. What you are looking at, where's my heart pencil? There we go. The red is our opposition forces. These are the filthy commies. And you've got Cubans, Simbas, 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 Simbas. And the number there is the strength factor. It's the number of dice you roll in combat. And you have a, a rebel leader. In fact, this guy here, you've probably seen him on uh, a t-shirt worn by smelly, dirty people. Then you've got your leader, Mike, leader, who is this, Frederick? So you've got, uh, what are these two numbers here? We've got a strength point, firepower, and movement. The firepower is in red, movement is in green. You've got civilians, you've got your CIA operative, psyops, commandos, and then heavy weapons teams, armored cars, KIA and ops. These are your counters. We're going to put those up here to measure how many operations we have. And then KIA, of course, is for killed in action. When it when the gray side is up, that's a bad sign. It means that we have our boys have been killed in action. When the yellow side is up, oh no, we want the plus is good. Plus KIA means that we've killed more of the bad guys than they've killed of us. Negative is a bad sign. Notice the back side of the the enemy is the red pieces are just as op for. So we can randomize how many appear, and then we do have a couple of airborne units, helicopter, and a couple of airstrikes, which I'm really hoping we get to use those. The green here are your, I don't want to call them neutrals, because this is going to be the goal of the game. We've got six up to six objective markers. They're going to be placed in random locations here on the map. And then we are going to be tasked with going to identify which of these objectives were friendly civilians that were trying to evacuate before the filthy commies shoot them, or... A, looking for evidence of the inevitable massacres that occur when commies take over. So that's the way the game is going to work. Taking a look at the map here real quick, this symbol here is our base. We've got two of them, one down here in Elizabethville and one up here in Leopoldville. You don't need a war to learn geography. You just need a war game, right? Over here is Lake Tanganyika. There are cards that will allow you to move by a Lake Tangan Tanganyika. The other thing to be aware of are the airplanes, are air bases. So even though our military bases are down here, you can expend resources to make a hop up to there in one turn. And that's going to be important because this is a very important resource up here. This is our turn chart. The term they use is operations, but it's also basically how many turns you have to get in, investigate your objectives, and then get back out of dodge. The little blue swampy areas are the boonies, and then, of course, these are your settlements, your cities. Abuta, Paulus, uh, Coquilhatville, Stanleyville, Kindu, Port Franke. Port, I don't know, why is this called a port? Does anybody know anything about geography? You're not on the ocean. You ain't even on a lake. This should be Albertville. This should be Port Franke down here. 
Anyway, let's go ahead and set the game up. These cards we're going to shuffle up in a couple of different ways. And the first thing you need to be aware of is you actually have two decks here. This is your mission deck. These four blue line cards are going to tell us what our game is going to be. You can play a string of four games and turn this into a campaign. We're not going to do that today. We're going to draw one at random. And then these are your op four cards. And let's just take a look real quick. When you move into a new area with a forest, you draw a card. And you may get a result of friendlies. If you have a leader, psyop, or supply column, gain one op or reveal one objective. That could be very useful. You may have opposition force. It's a raid. Pick one of your forces not located in a base. Pick three of these red chips. Conduct your battle. CIA intervention. Oh, we're in America now. Oh, no, we're still in the Congo. Roll, gain one operation, so you get to take another turn. Then roll a die, divide by two, round up, select that number of units from your recruit pool at no cost. When your boys die, they go back down here into the recruit pool, and they can come on later if you, well, under certain circumstances, which we'll see. UN intervention. Roll one die on a one to four, reshuffle all the discards. I'm assuming this card, too. Oh, you reshuffle the deck. And then, of course, peacekeepers of a leader or psyop is with the operating force. Gain one op. So you find peacekeepers that can help you out. Morale check. If the KIA index is currently positive, gain two ops. If it's negative, lose two. If it's zero, no effect. So if we run out of operations, run out of turns, before we've met our objectives, we lose. I love this kind of game. You know, it, it should take well, my lunch hour. I have a quiet little place. I don't have to worry about normies asking me questions. I don't have to worry about my coworkers busting my balls because I'm trying, pretending to be a SELA scout. I can just focus on this. You know, I wish I had a lot more time to do that kind of thing. You know, play, throw a monster game down on the table and game for, for three hours a night once a week and build up over the years. Oh, is this going to turn into an impromptu uh, counterpunching? It, it couldn't be because I don't actually have a punch. But, uh, as I was saying, this is a great way. These little solo games, they're a great way to get your fix of Hex Encounter Wargaming. I'm a big fan of these. I think we've done three or four of them already, including the Vikings. The aforementioned Merrill's Marauders. And, uh, you know, if you don't have somebody handy, if you're stuck at home for whatever reason, valid or otherwise, you know, a legitimate reason or maybe a lockdown. Those are two different things. This is a great way to pass the time. It's a great way to kind of exercise your muscles when you're not allowed to go outside and exercise the rest of you. I'm going to finish punching these out. We'll shuffle up the decks. We'll figure out what our uh, mission is, and then we'll purchase some forces, and then we'll start rolling. I think we are now ready to see the elephant. I got my dice ready. I got my boys ready. But the first thing we have to do, this is our... You know, let's go and put the action card down here. This is our deck of missions. So we're going to mix those up real good. Which, which is which? Find the lady, win a buck. We're just going to shuffle them, pull the top card, and our mission is going to be search and destroy. Place two real and three massacres. Recover at least one real objective. Kill five rebels. You got 12 operations to do it. 30 boys, and you get one leader. I pulled off one real objective. That's this civilian counter. We're going to go ahead and tuck him right over here. That means we got these five guys... And I don't know which is which. I'm going to mix them up just a little bit more so you know that I'm trustworthy. And then what we do is we roll on this chart over here, random objective location table. We're going to roll that five times. We're going to get a nine for Boomba and a ten. So we'll put you in Boomba and you in Gamena. So there's Boomba. There we go. She's way up there. Learning as we go. Eight is going to be Paulus. And two will be Buta. Paulus is all the way up here, as is Buta, and we just have one more to put. So as you can see, number 10, we're going to re-roll any doubles, and then 12 is going to be in Port Franchi, which is right here. So we got ourselves some challenges here. Our bases, our boys are going to start down here, and we got to get up and find... What's our victory conditions? Recover at least one real objective. i got four of them up there. If this one is the real objective, we might be able to snag it right away, and then spend the rest of our time hunting down Simbas. 
We don't know if that's the case or not, so that's going to affect how we purchase our forces. We've got a total of 30 recruit points plus one leader, and I think we'll take Mike. This handsome lad right here, he's got a firepower of one and a movement of three. I've got 30 recruit points to spend. So what I did is I bought four, three paratroopers. Those cost four points apiece. That's 12 points. I also bought an airstrike for three. That brings me up to 15. And then this is my main ground-based strike force. And as you can see, I've got one, two, three commando platoons. I've got a supply unit, a psyop unit my leader, and then I also purchased one armored car for that heavy, heavy weapons. The armored car also allows me to conduct recon, which is going to be very important because it allows me to investigate some of these objective markers without actually stirring up any opposition forces. What we're going to do is we're going to place Leader Mike. He's our ground-based ground fella. We're going to put him up here, and then we're going to put our Commandos are our paratroopers down here in Elizabethville. So these are our main bases. This is our objective for where we're trying to get our guys. And then rather than mark, now I've, I'm actually going to put, this shows you that I've got that airstrike available. And we'll see how that works once we run into a hornet's nest. The rest of these guys in Force Mike, I'm not going to put on the map. I'm just going to move him. Stacking limit, six counters. As you can see, I've got six here ground base counters plus the leader. So I'm going to move him around and when we have to deal with this stuff, that's when we'll, in fact, I think I'll just put these right down here for now. So they're on the map. We know what we're dealing with and it's going to be three specials and three platoons. And I think we're ready to conduct our first turn. Let's take a look at the strategic situation before we get started. Most of our objectives are way up here in the rebel hotbed of the north far from our commando bases down south. I want to scope out these two objectives using my paratroopers. These guys are close enough to Stanleyville and the air base that I may be able to bring my heavy hitter force up here without too much trouble. So I'm going to try to land three paratroopers right here in Bondo, which is the boonies, and i got to check against this chart. I'm going to roll one die for each of my boys, and on a one, the op is canceled. They can no longer do airdrops. On a two, one of the ops has a bad landing, and on three to six on these dice, everything is fine. So three, four, and four means that everything is fine, and we land without issue, and then we have to draw, so there they are, we have to draw one of these event cards, and here's where the uncertainty of the game enters in. This is where the cards become your opponent, and keep you surprised. Now rather than just dealing them out, just, I'm just going to cut them every time I draw one. We have an event, and that is op four. Roll one die, divide by two. Round up any fractions. We'll roll a die. Divide by two. That means we got to take two of these opposition forces markers and put them in the space. We're going to engage in combat. So I'll just grab any two at random, and I'm going to drop this down to protect my battlefield. And we line them up in order of power. So we get a guy with a firepower of six. And a guy with a firepower of two. We drew the Cubans. Those Cubanos are going to be a problem. Number six. The next thing we do. So everybody's going to shoot across the board until you... Well, I think everybody shoots at the, the guy at the top of the list, maybe? It's not entirely clear. I think these guys fire across the board. That's going to be very important for the next battle. This time around, all my commandos are the same. Uh, sorry, all my paras are the same. We got a roll for initiative. Orange die is for the Simbas. White die is for good guys. Simbas get to shoot first. Yikes. So we dive bombed right into a an ambush. And this these Cubans are going to roll. They get a six, which means they eliminate this guy. He's not going to be able to shoot back. Now, we're going to go ahead and shoot with this guy at this one. Because if we can panic him, we get a five and a five. So he's panicked. He's done shooting. He's done for the battle. He hasn't been eliminated, but he's done. And then we have this guy. He's going to fire at the Cubans. And with a six, the Cubans are eliminated now. So we move on to the next. And I think that means that the battle is over. Because they can't shoot. They get returned to here. And really, all they can do is soak casualties if we have a lot more guys left. So we were able to successfully. And that buys it. Oh, I forgot to move this down. Cost us an op to land. We had a successful firefight. 
so we're done. And that is the end of our first turn. For the second turn, you can see these guys have a movement of one. I'm going to go ahead and move them into Gemena. There's a road right down to Leopoldville where my heavy hitters are. I want to see what's in there. But before I can do that, I have to draw another card to see what happens. Fight for Intel. Place three op four units in the space and engage in combat. All right. Here's our three. Oh, it's more Cubans. Oh, man, they're lousy. This place is lousy with Cubans. And unfortunately, I've only got two guys. We'll check for initiative first. I hope I win. And I do not, so we're going to have to eat 6d6. Only taking the highest value. The 5 means this old boy is panicked. And then I got a choice to make. Do I shoot the Cubans first? Or do I shoot these Simbas? I think we're going to target old Che Guevara there. And with a 4 and a 4, we do panic him. But we're going to have to take 3 more dice in this round. And with a 3, 4, and a 2, there's nothing. Alright, great. So we move on to the second round. And now he can soak casualties. But we got to roll for initiative first. 4 and a 4. We win ties. We're going to shoot at the Simbas. And we miss. And they're going to roll 3 at us. And that 6 is an elimination... And then this guy is also eliminated. So that paratrooper did us no good, and we didn't even win the intel. See, if we had won, we could have revealed a couple of of uh, the objective markers, but we didn't. So we'll move these out of the way, and we'll see what we can do with our second strike force. That was just a waste of an op. Oh, uh, yeah, that op moving into Gamena cost an op, too, so I just moved the, the turn counter, so to speak. And we'll kind of swirl these around, make sure I don't know which is which. I want to keep that as random as possible. Maybe I'll just throw that Cuban chip out. Ugh, you're annoying. As a result of that battle, we had two units killed. So we're at minus four. And we had one unit panicked at the end of the battle, which means our KIA is at minus five. That's going to be a problem. Remember, one of our victory objectives is to have a KIA plus five. We did eliminate one. So that goes up to four, and that's it. Now we're going to move on to turn number ten. And for this, we got to move down to the south. We're a lot stronger down here. I'm feeling good. We want to go check out Port Frankie. Remember, one of our objectives is to get, find some, uh, some good guys, so we've already moved our turn counter. We're going to move one, two spaces. We move at the speed of our slowest guy, and that's the supply column. And then we are going to shuffle and draw another card to see what the event is as we enter that city of Port Franchi. What do we got? We got road out. If they have a sapper, ignore this card, otherwise lose one op. So we go down to nine, and then it says also ignore this card of using air or airborne. Well, we're not, so that card goes bye-bye. I'll take it. We lost one op, but we didn't have to shoot anybody up, so we turn over the objective marker, and hey, look at civilians. Hey, that's great. But we still have to fight our way out of here. Because we turned over an objective card, we're going to face... Is it 3 or is it D3? Oh, two event cards. I wasn't supposed to reveal that yet. I was supposed to turn over another card, and we get op 4, roll 1 die, divide by 2, to round up any fractions, place that number of op 4 units, engage in combat. All right, let's see how many we got. Just one, so the guard is... A leader! We found a leader squatting on these civilians. And now we are going to have a little easier time. By the way, whatever happens here, we get to gain or lose one op. We'll go ahead and line these guys up. It's the same thing as before. I'm just going to put my commando units first, and then my heavy boy. And this is the order they shoot in, and then I've got a couple of guys down here that move and don't shoot. The psyop. And the and that's really what the these extra units are for. That if we had had a sapper instead of the psyop, we could have ignored that loss of an op. But be that as it may, we got to roll for initiative because we have a leader. We get plus one. But of course, old, old Shea Gooey here gets to shoot first. The good news is he only has a strength of one. So with a four result, he gets no result. And now I get to roll a lot of dice to see if I get him. Total strength of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten dice all together. So I'm going to start off by rolling six, and all I need to get is one six. One five, actually. I've panicked him. Since he's the last unit, he goes bye-bye. Our KIA goes up to negative three. And now we reveal the objective marker, and that's the end of the turn. And we're just about to the point where we can 
get our boys back home. In fact, we get, oh, we get our intel, so the intel goes up to 10, and now it's the next turn, it drops back down to 9, and we're going to go boom, boom to here. We don't draw an event card, but we do meet the, the important qualification of uh, our victory condition. We have recovered one real objective. Now we got to go patrol, and we got to try and eliminate the, the enemy rebels that are crawling around the countryside. We got to get rid of more of them than they get rid of us. So we're going to go ahead and patrol up to, I mean, it doesn't really matter where, right? Let's go ahead and patrol down. Let's go take the battle to them. We're going to go up to Kokil, Kokilhatville. And we draw a card. Oh, first of all, we're down to eight ops. And then we draw a card. Morale check. If the KA is positive, gain two. If it's a negative, lose two. So we go down to six. And that's the end. Now we're going to move... Um, We'll go patrol down here to Bandundu. We'll draw an event card. Op four, roll one die, divide by two, round up, place that many. Three this time. All right, we'll take one, two, and three. I'm gonna drop them down right here. Our leader, remember we're in Bandundi, so here's our three. And it's, oh man, again, it's those Cubans. Ugh, at least they don't have a leader this time. So now I want to go ahead and line these guys up in the order that I want them to get shot at. And I can, there's only two of them, so th three of them. We may want to, I'm going to go ahead and use my supply column, or should I use my airstrike? I'm going to use my airstrike. And... This So that what that means is for this battle, all my dudes go up by plus one. All of my powers. I'm going to get to roll an extra die. That's huge. Is it everybody? Let's, let's double check them rules, shall we? Call in an airstrike. Pick up one or more and place them on the map. Uh, the airstrike adds a number of die rolls equal to its firepower to the ground combat of any one unit. Okay. I thought that was too much. So I'm going to say you are going to add plus one to this armored car. We roll for initiative. I get a plus one because I have a leader, and I still don't get to shoot first. Those Cubans do. Man, I ain't got nothing against no Cubans, but I'm starting to. So they're going to fire straight across, no effect. Haha. -ha. So I'm going to fire these guys at the, the Simbas with a value of two. I get a six. They're eliminated. KIA goes up to negative two. Then they're going to fire these two. At, and there were three of them at this commando unit, and they're going to eliminate him. So my KA goes down to minus four. Wow, this is a hard game. The good news is I've got a lot of shooting to do. I've got uh, two guys that can roll against the Cubans and eliminate them. KA goes to negative three. I've got a total of four dice to roll against these guys, and no effect. And then I've got my leader can also shoot at them to no effect. So we move on to the second round, and it's going to be roll for initiative. We get it this time, so I get to roll two dice against the Simbas, and with a five, they're panicked. That means we go to negative two, and we gain one up, so we're back up to seven, but we've lost a little bit of our strength. One last thing, we have to roll for our air support. On an even, it's available, it's available for future combats. On an odd, it's eliminated from your pool. So now we're going to move our... Commander, down back down to Port Franqui, and the top card on my deck is going to be Intel. Keep this card. Reveal two objective markers, take one additional op. Oh, so we're on op six. I forgot to move it down. I'm going to spend this card because all I, I'm, I'm, I'm racing against the clock. I'm going to buy myself another op. We're up to seven. I'm going to patrol down here to Kamina. Now let's go up here to Upper Congo, and we are back down to six ops. Draw the next card. Blow up stuff for intel. If the force has a sapper unit, keep this card. Otherwise, discard it. Then we go down to five, and we're going to patrol down over here to Kaongo. And we get, we're hoping for op four. U.S. intervention. Roll one die. Let's see what happens here. On a result of three peacekeepers, if lo leader or psyop, which it is, gain one op. All right, we're back up to six. 
but that's kind of a wash. It just buys us that one turn that we just went through. We'll go to Bukayu, eh? Bukavu. I keep saying Bukayu, but it's Bukavu. Op four raid. Pick one of your forces at random and locate not located in a base. Well, this is the only boy, boys I got. Uh, pick three op four units. One. Well, I guess we're taking that one. Two and three. We'll do what we do. And I like this one. We only need to get to five, by the way. So, it, you know, this if we can win this without a casualty, then we'll be in pretty good shape. For every one of our guys that we lose, we have to KIA two more of those, of theirs. And that PSYOP would, did us some good. Oh, where's my leader? Yeah, he's in Bukavu. I'm going to put my leader down here at the bottom. We got a roll for initiative. Ties go to us. So we'll roll two. I'm going to use my airstrike again. And my heavy boy is going to get it. So he's attacking the two. They are panicked. These two are attacking these two. Eliminated. KIE goes down to negative four. Then I've got my... These guys can fire. Two, no effect. And then this one is going to fire. With a result of four, that's no effect. Then I get to roll four dice all together because my heavy boy with the air support is shooting at the two. So there's an eliminated back up to negative three. We will uh, eliminate this guy. And then I have one more. I got my leader's going to shoot at this Simba. And with a result of a four, he's going to be panicked. And that is the end of the combat. These guys go back in. But I don't think those guys count towards KIA. Each time an op four is eliminated, each time it can go up one space. If commando casualties, blah, 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 if K is a negative at the end of the mission, you have lost the game even if you accomplish the objective. Yeah, so not good enough. Um, you know, actually, that's not true. That's not true. I still have one more attack. If I can do one more panicked result, which I do... So here, here's the status, right? These guys are panicked. He shoots at him... That becomes a KIA. And then I've got my leader can I target this guy. You have to play through the end of the round. With a one, nothing happens. But at least I'm up back up to right where I started from. Okay. We'll roll for this guy to see if he's available. And on a four, he will be available. And we're going to use him there again. Uh, our leader is going to stroll back on down over to Kaongo. And we'll see what the next card is. It's going to be friendlies. If the operating force has a leader, psy up, which we do, gain one up. Which we'll take. We're still on six. We go back down to five. And we patrol down over to Congolo. We draw CIA NATO. Gain one operate. Oh, let's see. Gain one up. Then roll one die. Okay. One. Divide by two. Round up fractions. That many units from your recruitment pool can be placed in any friendly base. Okay. So I'm going to take... A heavy weapons team, that's this guy right here. And I'm going to put him down here in this base. And we're going to run down there and see if we can pick him up. I'll take it. But we're down to four ops, so that might be a problem. I'm going to move one, two to here. Draw an event card. And it's going to be op four hepped up. I'll roll one die, divide by two. Place them in the space and engage in combat. They're not affected by panic. Oh boy, at least there's only one of them. So they're all juiced up. And this guy right here... Really wants to throw down. All right, we're in Lakasi. I think we're on three ops. So, initiative. We get plus one. That's a tie. We get to shoot first. And uh, remember, the only thing that we get, we're looking for is sixes here. And we eliminated him. KIA goes up to negative one. Hey, we're doing pretty good. Didn't even have to use a, an air unit for that one. We'll put the leader back down. Now, for one intel, for one op, we're going to pick him up. Oh, boy. We don't draw a card. So I'm going to add this heavy boy to my task force. And now I'm down to just one op, and I go back up to inner Katanga. And my last one is going to be east block intervention. Roll one die. Place that number of op four in this space, engage in combat. The, oh, you know what, though? You know what I've been missing? This op, op four prepped, hepped up, 
they bought me one, so I'm actually up to two. Oh, good. Oh, good. I got two more turns. Uh, this one says, fight three guys for this battle. The op four wins any tactical superiority die rolls. So this time, the enemy wins the ties, and I'm going to get two more turns. So I got to pick three of these guys, and I, I, yeah, I'm not paying attention. You'll have to trust me when I say these really are random. Two, 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 one. You got to love it. I'll bring our little battle mat. It's actually just a mouse pad. But it keeps the keeps the dice from overwhelming. There's our civilians we didn't use. All right, here we go. We are at negative one KIA. We are going to use our heavy air support, but we're going to attach it to our armored car. Uh, no, to our heavy weapons. They have a firepower of four. Oh, I love it. So, as I said, it's going to be leader down here, and then we're going to roll for initiative. We win first initiative. We're going to roll two dice. Oh, this goes 2-2-1. Two, two, Against the guy with the two. No special rules. He is panicked. Then they're going to roll two against our commandos. And they get snake eyes for no result. Then I've got five dice that I can roll against this guy. He's eliminated. We are now even with a KIA. Then he gets to roll one against the commando. He gets a two for no result. And I've got a total of three dice to roll against this guy. Well, first I'm going to roll three dice against... Mm, what do we do here? I'm going to roll three dice against that guy. Eliminated. All right, we are now up to plus one K. Finally. And our leader is going to shoot at this guy. And he's going to get no results. So we roll for initiative. We win. So we're going to roll with our two guys. And the six eliminates him. We're up to plus two. We are so close to winning this game. Put our leader back down here in Inner Katanga, and we're just kind of patrolling at this point. We'll go up to Albertville, go surfing on Lake Tanganyika, the great lake of Africa. That cost us an op. We're down to three. And then, oh, look at that. I got to reshuffle my deck. I also went ahead and mixed up. I don't know if you can see it. There's my op for I went ahead and mixed those up, too. Here's my deck. Maybe I should zoom out a little bit so you can see. And we, so what did I do? I moved up to Albertville. I spent my op, so we're down to three of those. And now I draw friendlies. If they have a psyop, gain one op. We'll do it. We're back up to four. We'll move over to Congolo. Now we're back down to three. Draw another card. Hept up. Divide by two, run up any fractions. Uh, but we are going to gain an, two ops for this. Sweet. Back up to five. Um, Got to roll to see how many we're facing. Three, of course. Simba, Simba, Simba. Three, two, one. Just like that. Rolling for initiative. They win ties, but that's not going to do them any good this time. Oh, I forgot to roll for my uh, airborne. So they are eliminated. I no longer have that option. We're on our own. But I can spend the supply column. And the supply column does the same thing. Uh, where's the supply column? Per the optional rules, oh boy, it it does the same thing. It allows us to do plus one if it's ex and you can also use it to move one more space. I don't care about racing across the map. I'm just going to attach it to my heavy weapons. Um, my heavy weapons are going to this guy is going to fire at the three for no result. Three is going to fire at my commandos and eliminate them. And I think that might be the game right there. I'm back down to zero on the KIA. Uh, then this guy is going to roll five dice to eliminate the three. Back up to plus one. And then the two is going to roll for my heavy weapons, and they're going to eliminate the heavy weapons, which, I don't know, I think that, uh, probably, that probably does it. I, my supply, well, we'll see. On an even result, he is available, well, you know, he's gone. Okay, so I got to roll for this guy. Three dice gets me a panic, and then my leader, who I should put right here, we're going to put him below the psyop, is going to have no effect. Then they roll one die for no effect, and we move on to the next round. We get to shoot first, and of course we're going to shoot at this Simba with our boy. We're going to panic him, and then our leader is going to fire, and he is not going to have any effect, so... 
All that resulted there is we're at negative one. We're down to just one platoon, a psyop, and a leader. What can you do? We're going to go back down to four, and we'll draw another op four. Oh, we do gain an op, win or lose. So we're back up to five. But we have to roll a d3 to see how many we face. You get mixed up. So we're only going to face two this time. And it's going to be a leader and a weak. Okay. So roll for initiative. And we're both plus one. We get to shoot first. And we're going to take three shots at the leader. To panic him. And then we're going to... Well, he's going to shoot at our commando unit and eliminate him. We're down to negative one. And our leader is going to fire at him and have no effect. So in the next round... We'll roll for initiative. This guy gets to shoot first, and he has no effect, and our leader is going to shoot at him and have no effect. So we roll for initiative. Uh, one versus six. We'll shoot first. Panic him, and then that's the end of the turn, and they go bye-bye. And according to the rules, I, I think this game is over. I think we've lost. Because the only way you bump your, your KIA counter up is if you deliver one elimination or... Two panics. But since I've only got one leader that's capable of shooting, I don't see any way I can win this. I'm going to call it quits right here, and I'm going to leave it with the fact that this is not an easy game to win. That's not true. I'm going to say one other thing. We played mission number CM... What is that? CM17? That's the big one. Most of these... Yeah, 12 operations, 30 recruits. Let's take a look at these other missions real quick, shall we? In this case, you've got... Uh, focus there, would you? Three real, three falsies, 10 operations, 35 recruit points. This mission is going to be seven operations and 20 recruit points. So this might be a better starting scenario. It's not quite as much to it. A little quicker, seven ops, 20 points. You really only have enough for one big commando unit. And then we've got cover up here, which or coup, excuse me, which is uh, nine operations and 25. You get one leader... I think all these have one leader. No, you get two leaders for the big one. Rescue the Hostages is the the one for experienced gamers. So a couple of different challenges, but it all boils down to throw out some objective markers in random locations, and can your boys get out there and reveal those objective markers? Most of these are... Oh, okay. No, you got to look at the objectives, right? Recover two real objectives. Recover one real objective and kill the rebel leader... So you have to find him one time. You might be patrolling around hoping you draw that rebel leader chit. And then here it's just recover the real objective. You've, only, you've got one real and three massacres. So it's a little harder to find it because it's one out of four where we had two out of five. 25% versus 40%. I can do math on the fly sometimes. Couple of different commando raids missions, none of which are particularly easy. The ones that are shorter, you have less resources to draw on. But that does make the game a little bit easier. And like I said, what is this video? We're up to about 30, 40 minutes. Kind of thing you can play on your lunch hour. I'm a fan. You should be too. I'm praying for you.